Hello everyone, this is an audio only upload because I have noticed that pretty much all of my content is me staring at you and talking, which is essentially like a podcast. So for this video, maybe for this whole series, it will be uploaded in audio form only, so feel free to put this on in the background while you do whatever else it is that you do. In this series, we're going to talk about the Celts and Celtic belief and Celtic deities in particular. We will most likely talk about Irish deities through every episode, but that is not our focus. I really want to shine light on things outside of Ireland in Celtic uh, lore because they don't get the spotlight. And, you know, I think there's several reasons for that. One is that, you know, we as humans, we, we like to just take what we are given and accept it and not always dig deeper. We'll just take what's being fed to us and that could be a bad thing or a good thing the irish deities became very popular shortly after the rise of wicca in the late 50s in the uk and its explosion in america in the 70s i think this may also be because you know ireland was the last celtic nation to be conquered by Rome. It was the last country to be converted to Christianity. So I think that there is more surviving information because it's newer information. Although, we have to remember that the information that was given to us was given to us by by Christians, by priests who recorded this information down, by monks. So we're being given pagan information by Christians. Now, you know, there's there's conspiracy theories and debates about how Christian were these monks and stuff. But, you know, the information that's being recorded by these people was information that was hundreds of years out of date by the time it was written down. We're getting, you know, that telephone game of pagan information. There, there, there's really not pagan information written by pagans for us, especially in the Celtic world. You know, the Celts across tribes were an oral tradition, which means that, you know, they, they were storytellers. They passed things down. And stories down from the ages, and that's how they kept things alive. So their whole culture kind of was uh, a telephone game. <laughs> and I think that's something that we still see, especially in the South. The South, the American South, is going to come up a lot in this series as well, as it does in all of my content, because I am from the South. And because the South is a Neo-Celtic tradition, and what I mean by that is... The American South is largely populated by peoples who are descendant of Celtic nations. And a lot of those Celtic practices, because the American South is mostly populated by Scottish and Irish descendants, the Scottish and Irish are the considered the most quote-unquote Celtic nations still today in the historical community and that is because those two nations again were the last nations to be conquered so their 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 traditions did survive longer but they continued to be nurtured and survive for whatever reason Scotland and Ireland are very proud of their heritage and very proud of their stories and their folklore and their language uh that being, you know, Gaelic or Gaelic or Gaelic. The American South is no different. 
you know, we have our own way of speaking. Uh, we are very tribal in many ways. We are very different from the rest of America. But even within the South, state by state, you get very different accents. You get very different Southern experiences, different Southern food and music and culture. And that ties back to our ancestors, right? That that, that directly ties to the Celts. Also, linguistically, we are said to be the people in America who sound the most like uh, our Celtic ancestors. Like, we've carried over a lot of the sounds in the language. With that being said, yay, woo, Southern pride, I guess, without being racist. The Celts are a pan- culture and that's something we need to remember too before we get into deities you know when we're talking about america right you talk about the native americans or the indigenous people here there's not one term for those people they were just people who lived here now yes there are specific tribal names like chickasaw cherokee choctaw uh, Blackfoot, Apache, you know, there's a lot. And most all of those had their own dialect or own specific languages that they spoke. They had their own, you know, many cultures that added to the larger pot. Native Americans are not a monolithic culture. They are a diverse culture. And we see that with the Celts as well. They are a tribal community. So each community, each country even within that country, has different languages, dialects, cultures, foods, music, and specifically for this, you know, deities. We can kind of compare deities amongst the different Celtic tribes. In some cases, we do not see one specific deity in any other tribe, and that's pretty cool, right? Or we may see a deity who acts completely different in a different tribe such as the Morgan. We all know the Morgan. She is an Irish deity under that name. Probably the most popular Celtic deity in modern magical practice. Death goddess, sex goddess, war goddess, right? Well, if we travel on over to Wells or Kimru, we get Modrin, or Modrin, Modrin, uh, and Modrin is essentially the same goddess, you know, uh, we can debate that, we can talk about whether it's healthy or not to compare deities, you know, we could get into the Greco-Roman debate of, you know, are their gods the same, are their gods not the same, were they the same only after they assimilated Greek influence, we could get into that debate. And, you know, we see that effect here in the Celts. Once the Celts really start trading with one another and speaking to one another, we see cultural assimilation. Uh, we see sharing of ideas, adopting of ideas. And that's where we get paradoxical deities and information, which is a beautiful thing, but also a maddening thing to try to understand. Modrin is, yes, associated with crows, ravens, and other corvids. But she's also associated with, you know, healing and light. The color white. She's a loving mother to her son, Mabon, who you may have heard of. Mabon, the, the, you know, the Sabbath. She is this generous light goddess. However, move through to other tribes within Wales, like the Manx, and suddenly she is more like her Morgan counterpart. She, you know, sends crows over the battlefield. She is very akin to a banshee. She sometimes is a mermaid. It's fascinating. And we see that with the Morgan as well. There are so many different raven, 
quote unquote goddesses in the Celts. So it's obviously a very special animal to them. And we see that conglomerate of goddesses further down the line in history morph into Morgan Le Fay, right? Also debatable among historians and folklorists, but I think at this point is generally accepted that Morgan Le Fay is this neo face of chthonic, primordial, sorceress death goddesses. And I think that's why we see this duality in Morgan Le Fay as well. We see her, you know, in some stories, or sometimes in the same story, being a wonderful, devoted sister to her brother Arthur. She's a priestess of Avalon. She is a psychopomp. She is a healer and powerful magician. But she is also jealous of Arthur, plotting his downfall, has an incestual child with him to overtake his throne, tries to kill his men, the Knights of the Round Table, at every chance she can. That such is, you know, life, such is deities in all folklore. They are all things, and that is because deities at large teach us lessons. And I think I bring up Arthurian characters because every single Arthurian character in my study, but not just my study, in many scholars and historians and folklorists' studies have been able to be traced back to specific Welsh deities specifically. That is where the Welsh deities thrive. I've talked about how much, you know, the Irish, Irish, Irish. It's always Irish, Irish, Irish when it comes to Celtic magic in our community. Welsh magic, Welsh deities live on as literary characters. Now that can irk some people, but that gets into a debate on what is real, what is not real, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. I think some people don't like the idea that maybe magic is just in your head <laughs> and that gods are not real, but just in your head. And that's why they can be interpreted from person to person. But that's a philosophical and theological debate. Not for this, <laughs> for this content at this time. If you're wanting to get more into Welsh deities, I would look at the myths of King Arthur. Pick a character that you love such as Morgan Le Fay, and Google, you know, who is Morgan Le Fay? Where does Morgan Le Fay come from? Morgan Le Fay mythology. Read her mythology for yourself. Read some of her stories, and then go read about the Morgan and Modron, and you will see very, very big similarities. Guinevere, the Lady Guinevere, she can directly be tied to Blatwyd, a beautiful, amazing Welsh goddess, one that I love. Uh, Guinevere can also be tied to Rhiannon, who you probably know from a Fleetwood Mac song with Stevie Nicks. Rhiannon uh, and Eponia both can be tied to Guinevere. Guinevere can be tied to a lot of maiden-type uh, deities, whereas Morgan Le Fay is tied to a lot of crone deities. King Arthur. The Shining Knight, right? The, the, the Man of Light. Directly ties to Lou. This is, in this instance, L-L-E-U, Lou, who obviously shares phonetic similarities with Lou, L-U-G-H, over in Ireland. Or Lumios, or Lugmios. We see his name also in the Sabbat of Lunessa. All tied together here. The Celts, as I said all share things, but, you know, also have different views on shared things. It's a giant spider web and rabbit hole for you to explore. This is just a taste of, you know, what is to come in this series. I just wanted to give you a briefer about what it's kind of going to be like. In the next video, I will pick specific, uh, uh, specific Ds, and wax poetic on them. We'll talk about their Ogum correspondences, 
their Greco-Roman god correspondences, such as Lu being compared to Apollo. We'll talk about Jesus Christ and how he is tied to a Celtic deity. Bet you didn't know that. A Celtic deity primarily worshipped in uh, the by the Britons, but also sometimes by the Picts and the Scots. There's a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack. We'll talk about the Druids. You know, we'll talk about how Celtic itself is not even a quote-unquote Celtic term, such as Druid, such as most of the deities' names. Almost everything is Roman. So, who even are these Celts? What is a Celt? What is a Gaul? Are the Gauls the same as the Celts? Are all Gauls Celtic? Short, short answer, yes, but not all Celts are Gauls. <laughs> In the meantime, like I said, I would suggest you go and look up Arthurian characters, reacquaint yourself with them, and see who they tie to in Celtic mythology. The Green Knight is also a very good story and a great place to jump from. Is the Green Knight the Green Man? Is he Carnunos? Is he Hearn the Hunter? Is he Jack in the Green? Perhaps. Go look it up. Go explore. This is our cultural heritage, you know, uh, as modern magicians, regardless of ethnicity. Uh, however, you know, if you are ethnically uh, tied to Celtic, any of these Celtic regions, including Spain and Portugal, uh, you know, this is this is your birthright in a lot of ways, and uh, these are your ancestors. So take pride in that. You know. Know your history, know your ancestors, connect deeper with them, it deepens your magic. But for now, I'll leave you with that. Go explore King Arthur, go explain, explore Merlin. Is Merlin a Celtic deity? I say yes. Is he tied to Ogma, the king and god of Ogum, the divination system? Maybe so. Is he Odin, which is not a Celtic deity? Maybe so. Is he Mirrodin? Is he Mass, who is a Welsh deity? And Gwydion? Oh, that's a great story. Math and Gwydion, great Welsh deities, great Welsh story. You know, who is Angus, and why is he called the god of love, if the Celts have no god of love? We'll get into all this. I digress. For now, enjoy this. I hope I've piqued your interest. And until we dive in further to Celtic mythology and Celtic spirits, I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay well. And don't forget to check out the links down below. You'll be taken to my website, alabamamagic.com. At alabamamagic.com, you can book all sorts of divination readings with me. Tarot readings. Oracle readings. Rune readings. Sticks and stones. Charms and bones readings. Many different readings. Astrology charts. And of course, Celtic divination with Ogum. Also, it is not listed yet on my website, but if you want a Colbrin uh, reading, you can get that as well. Colbrin is a Welsh divination system that came about in the 1800s. Very controversial. It is very similar to runes. You can book that as well. You can also book magical guidance sessions with me where I share my 20 years of experience in the magical community with you helping you, you know, start a practice, refresh a practice, figure out a spell, and the like. I offer shadow work counseling sessions with support because shadow work is a, you know, it's important, but it's also difficult and can be scary and sometimes you need a friend. I am a licensed and certified counselor. I am also an ordained and licensed minister having served since 2007. You can also book purely counseling for your mental health sessions with me. That is also available. I offer it at a flat rate uh, without your insurance. It, it, the rate I offer is cheaper than even if your insurance covered it and you had to use a copay for most everyone. That's a service I like to offer. I think it's important that we, you know, 
have someone we can speak to in a professional sense that is legally obligated <laughs> to keep our business to themselves. That would be me. So, if you are intrigued by any of that, go to alabamamagica.com. Of course, check out any of my other YouTube videos. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I am everywhere else as well. Every service you can think of that's a social media place, I'm there. But if you want to reach me, the best place is Instagram. That is Elijah Avalon at Instagram. Or you can email me at Elijah Avalon at minister.com. And until next time, goodbye.